Will she govern? We're going to go off the wall and break down her record. Next. No loyalty to this country. I don't know, Kamala. I did serve in the United States Marine Corps and build a business. What the hell have you done other than collect a check? Trump campaign focusing a bit more now on Vice President Kamala Harris amid growing calls for Biden to drop out. Leading up to the question, what would it look like, a presidency of Kamala Harris? You need to get to go? I need to be able to get where you need to go? The significance of the passage of time. So when you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time. Culture is, it, it, it is a reflection of our moment and our time, right? And, and, and present culture is the way we express how we're feeling about the moment. I really love Venn diagrams. You know, the circles, right? Three usually. <laughs> Pretty good. That would be, we get four years of that. Let's now go off the wall to better understand the background of the vice president and the policies she has supported. So first of all, before we get into the policies and everything, there's this call for her. And one of the first calls for her uh, as, a, as a viable candidate came from her own hometown of San Francisco. Remember, she was the DA at San, in San Francisco. It's seven members there calling for her path to win. They wrote in a letter, this election is a fight for our democracy and Harris is the candidate with the most viable path to victory. That's the argument that the Harris camp is making right now, is that, yeah, J Joe might have been the candidate in 20, but is he the right guy in 2024? This is just one poll, Will. This poll says has them both um, losing to Trump more dramatically, Harris, actually, but some others have shown it differently. Yeah, there, there are polls out there right now suggesting Kamala Harris might have a better path than Joe Biden. Whatever it is today, though, won't reflect what it would be if she were the nominee when the entire Democratic Party would coalesce behind her after a big fight and all the media push would get behind Kamala Harris. What would the polling look like at that point in time? Swing states matter the most, too. I mean, old Scranton Joe would say, oh, I'm better in the Rust Belt or the, or the Work Belt. Whereas with the coastal elite of Kamala Harris play very well in Wisconsin, Michigan, and uh, in Pennsylvania? Who knows? Well, take a look at Kamala Harris. Who is she? What has she done? Well, her first real entree into public service, more so than public life, because she was around uh, the San Francisco mayor, Montel Williams, many others, that put her on this sort of public-facing stage. But her first public office was as district attorney. Uh, where she was known uh, as, in the beginning, Pete, tough on crime. I mean, during her first three years as district attorney in San Francisco, the conviction rates jumped, and she was hard, hard on prosecuting marijuana. She's similar to Joe in that regard, right? She's had a conversion now away from uh, tough on crime, lock them up, uh, a big increase in San Francisco, and part of that was uh, opposition to marijuana. Yeah, v views changed now. You've seen the videos of her, like, talking about we pretty much endorsing at least the decriminalization or liberalization of it that wasn't always the case in california no and there's a big case that sort of ended up defining her time uh, as da she declined she had the opportunity to pursue the death penalty when a san francisco police officer isaac espinoza was murdered brutally murdered uh she instead declined to pursue the death penalty and police unions never forgave her for that uh, ultimately the police said in fact at the uh, funeral. Senator Dianne Feinstein de delivered a new uh, eulogy with criticized Harris, who was in the audience and got a standing ovation for it. So she's been uh, crosswinds with some of the political powers in California over this. Now, what did she do, though, when she arrived at the office of senator? Well, she came out strong against ICE, Pete. That's um, one of the things. I mean, I think she's talked very radically about coming down hard on ICE. Yeah, um, one of the it, it's been a defi it was a defining attribute of her time as a senator. I mean, you remember she also donated to the bail fund uh, during the riots of 2020 in Minneapolis. This is someone who, uh, ever since what happened in San Francisco, has looked sideways at law enforcement to include immigrations and customs. Yeah, she said in 2018, no question, we've got to critically re-examine ICE and its role. She's supporting Medicaid, uh, Medicare for All. Which is, which is government-run health care. Right, and that's that's the far left wing of the Democratic Party anyway, so she was in that wing when she was in the Senate. She's, uh, def you cannot deny the fact she's an ambitious human being. And when she got to Washington, D.C., she read the tea leaves that moving to the left was politically expedient for her. Deny that record of being tough on crime, push government-run health care, and, of course, the du jour of left-wing politics, the Green New Deal. Green New Scam. And remember, she represented California at this point. Once you talk about what wing of the Democratic Party do you represent, well, if you represent California, 
like Gavin Newsom. You're going to be representing the far left side of the Democratic Party. That's exactly right. Well, okay, now she's the vice president. Uh, she's got a, a suite of issues on her plate, some of which she embraces, some of which she does not. Uh, this is one she took on voting rights, which ultimately, I mean, voting rights is the name they give it, but it really was solidifying the loosening like they did under COVID of the protections of how we vote. So getting rid of voter ID, more mail out balloting, a more universal uh, registration no matter what. Um, not talking about you know, making sure you're a citizen or showing your ID, uh, expanding the voter pool. When she was nominated or she was appointed to be the border czar, and really I don't have much to tell you about this because nothing much happened. <laughs> I mean, she was gonna get to the root causes and go down to Central America and figure out where all this is coming from, but basically nothing was done to secure the border under her guidance. And she didn't want the job. She was resentful about it from the beginning. She gone, went to the border only one time. The border's been a disaster. And then of course, and this is what she had basically premised her entire vice presidency on, is, is fighting against the overturning of Roe v. Wade and making abortion as universal as possible. I mean, that, when Joe talks about Congress, says, look at what she did on women's reproductive rights. And they won't stop talking about it. And that would be a centerpiece of any presidential campaign for Kamala Harris. It would be based upon identity politics of women and, of course, black women. And it's already being said, if you jump over a black woman, you are courting trouble, Democrats. And you could line them up. We should at some point line up the big names inside that party. They're already saying, you better not look over Kamala. It's true. All right, the RNC not only nominating the president. The conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, Senator Harris.